G'day, I'm Benjamin Carlyle, I'm a systems engineer, I'm a software engineer, today we're going to be talking about systems engineering. Functional requirements, the core of everything in systems engineering we really care about. What is a functional requirement? Functional requirements relate to functions of the system. So you've got a system, it's got a scope, it does something, it takes input, generates output. That's a function. Functional requirements are a description of a function and they typically include also performance requirements. Performance requirements and functional requirements are very hard to tease apart. Say we want to serve HTTP requests. How many? How fast? We need to know these things in order to design the system properly. So it's not good enough for a system to meet a functional requirement of answering HTTP requests if it doesn't meet the performance requirement of, of answering a thousand HTTP requests a second. So performance requirements and functional requirements very, uh, tie very closely together. Functional requirements are also useful because they allow us to do two import, extremely important other things. If we're managing a fixed price contract, if we're ma managing a fixed budget project, we're going to want to do some extra analysis. We're going to want to do two, two useful things. We're going to want to write verification requirements and we're going to want to do a hazard analysis. First let's talk about verification requirements. Every requirement will typically have a verification requirement that goes with it. Now this may be implicit, it may not be the systems engineer's job, but usually it works out better if it is. So somebody writes a requirement, that person is also a very good candidate for saying how that requirement is going to be tested. The verification requirement has two useful features. The first is it helps to clarify the original requirement to make sure that you understand it and the customer understands it. If we to state a requirement and then we state how to verify that requirement, the chance of not understanding the requirement and what it means and what it means to both uh, the supplier and the, and the, um, the, the customer um, is relatively low. So if we know what we're going to do and we know we're, how we're going to test it, then it's a very good chance we'll actually deliver the right thing in the end. And when it comes to actually performing acceptance tests and the like, We'll have that list already there, we'll know what to do in order to verify the system and there won't be any argument with the customer when it comes to actually whether the, fee, the function is actually met or not. So verification requirements is part of a functional baseline, functional baselines we'll get to in other videos, configuration management, but as part of the functional baseline, as part of the, the original, the main statement of so what this system is going to do. Function, uh, requirements, include, especially including functional requirements and verification requirements, are really key to the whole thing. But another aspect of this that I think cannot be understated, the importance of it in any really risky kind of project, is the hazard analysis, the preliminary hazard analysis, because hazard analysis is its own field, it can get complicated, but let's keep it simple. So for each functional requirement, we're going to ask a number of questions. What questions will we ask? Hmm, what is a function? A function takes input, it produces output, does some processing in the middle, and it's going to do it to a degree. It's going to do it with a certain level of performance. So when we look at a functional requirement, we're looking at what its inputs are, we're looking at what its outputs are. So preliminary hazard analysis. It's really simple stuff. Um, but often doesn't get done and on high risk projects risky, risky works requires extra analysis otherwise it's gonna go wrong. So a preliminary hazard analysis is a way to get our hazards list. We're going to look at each functional requirement in particular and we're going to look at its inputs, we're going to look at its outputs. We're going to ask the question what if we get wrong input? What if we produce wrong output? What if we produce, get input late? What if we produce output late? We're going to have a list of things that we're going to, a list of questions we're going to ask for each functional requirement in particular. We will ask um, those questions in series and we'll have a big table that says for each functional requirement we've got in, these are the description of the behavior of the system if the input is wrong, if the output is wrong, if it's late, early, we'll have a list of defined terms and we'll map them out. And so out of that we'll produce a statement. We'll say 
this is a hazardous behavior, a hazardous um, uh, condition, or it is not a hazardous condition. When we identify a hazardous behavior, we're gonna infringe a new requirement. Well, not always. Sometimes we'll just say that this requirement is super important. We might say it's still too. We might say it has a defined level of importance and that we'll need to treat it in particular ways very carefully when we wanna verify the thing and when we develop the thing. And we'll also want to minimize the safety part, the, most, the hazardous part of the, um, the system so that we can keep the hazards small and keep the rest of the system relatively free from hazards. But that all gets kind of complicated. It's not the purpose of this video. That new requirement is going to produce new entries in the, in the preliminary hazard analysis. Might even produce new hazards. But we'll go round and round a few times, we'll sort this thing out, we'll, get, we'll look at each of the functional requirements, we'll find out what can go wrong and we'll do our best to mitigate it and we'll have a list at the end of, the of this process, we'll have a list of requirements um, including some mitigating requirements, we'll know which, what mitigates what and we will have some tags against requirements that say this is an important one, it's one we care about, if it goes wrong, we go wrong. So when you put it all together, the main parts of the functional baseline that I care about are your functional requirements and other requirements, but functional requirements the most important. Your verification requirements, which are your t the beginning of your test specifications that says, hey, you're going to check it. And your hazard analysis that says what can go wrong, what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't go wrong. That is the basics of your functional baseline. Systems engineering. It's not rocket science, except when it is. See you guys.